Happy New Year, America, and welcome to the year 2020. Let's take a little bit of time and ponder what we might see in this upcoming year. Next on the Constitution Study. Every day. Well, hello there, Everyday Americans. Paul Engel here with the Constitution Study, where we read and study the Constitution and teach the rising generation to be free. That's right, we've survived another year, and there's another year on the horizon. If you like what I'm doing here, please head over to the website, constitutionstudy.com, check out the videos, check out the articles, maybe sign up for the newsletter. You can get my material delivered as it comes out right to your inbox, no searching, no trying to find out what's going on. All that's available there. If you can support the work that I'm doing, head over to the store, maybe buy a book or two, or just click the donate button. Help support the work that I'm doing to spread the message of liberty and how we keep it and how we exercise it, how we teach the rising generation to be free or how we secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. That is the goal of the Constitution Study. That's what I'm gonna be trying to do over the next year. So what can we expect in 2020? Well. First of all, we have a presidential election, or as I like to call it, silly season. I expect to see a tidal wave of accusations, suppositions, lies, disinformation, generally lies, darn lies, and statistics coming out of the candidates, left, right, center, top, bottom, you name it. That's pretty much what the presidential elections come down to. Who has the best lies to promise you the most goodies that they probably won't deliver on to take away your liberty and the promise of taking care of you? That's kind of what I expect through 2020, at least through the presidential election. I don't make predictions. Now, this is a very important point. I don't focus on candidates. I don't support candidates. I really don't focus on candidates. I focus on what's being done. Call them programs, call them projects, call them legislation. What's being done? So as we approach this election, it is now January. I have a challenge for you. Go out and meet your candidates this month, this week. Go out and meet them, talk to them. Ask them to show you what they've done to fulfill their oath to support the Constitution. If they haven't held office before, ask them what specifically are they going to do. And then listen, let them describe what their plans are or what they have done. And then ask yourself a very simple question. Are they talking about doing stuff for you or are they talking about supporting the Constitution? See, there's a very interesting point I came across doing some research for a webinar. I'd read it a dozen times, I've read it a hundred times, but it never really dawned on me. You see, the preamble to the Constitution ends with, and to secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. And it clicked. You see, when they do something that is unconstitutional, that violates or is anathema to the Constitution, we call it unconstitutional. And it's kind of a pretty euphemism. It's accurate, but it doesn't really say much. I've started referring to it as illegal because the Constitution is the supreme law of the land so that anything that violates the Constitution is by definition illegal. But if the purpose of the Constitution is to secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, then anything that violates the Constitution is not just illegal, but it subverts the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. Anything that politicians do, anything that Americans do, that is against the Constitution, is a violation of the Constitution, is a violation of liberty. It is a diminishing of our liberties. Now take a look at the legislation for the last year, for the last decade. How much of it do you see being constitutional and the stuff that is constitutional, can't you immediately link it up to a diminishment in our liberty? So that's our goal for 2020. Get ready for this election and start today. Vet your candidates, vet them based on, not by their promises, not by their party, not by what they say they're gonna do, not by their age, not by their color, not by their sex, not by where they're born but what they have done to fulfill their oath, 
to support the Constitution of the United States of America? And if the answer is little to none, then that should be their odds of winning the election. Then, once it comes down to election day, look at the different candidates. And again, forget their party, forget everything else. Compare them, what they have done, what they have planned to do, with some evidence, please, because I really don't trust a politician as far as I can throw the capital. And then use that to determine who has the, the programs and the policies that will most promote liberty, that will secure the blessings of liberty. And that is the person you vote for. And I put everything else out of the window. So that's the first thing we're going to deal with in 2020 is a presidential election, but it also means we're electing the entire House of Representatives. We're electing one third of the U.S. Senate and we're electing a lot of state officials as well. State representatives, state senators are going to be elected this year and we should start vetting them. Well, the way the Constitution study, we should be vetting them all along based on their oath, the fulfillment of their oath to support the Constitution. So if the first big thing that's coming up in the 2020 is the election, the next big thing is the census. I've already seen flyers looking for census takers, which is amazing because now we're going to have this whole brouhaha about all the questions that are being asked about the census. And yes, I will definitely have a video about the census and I'll do an article about the census and what it is and what it's there for. The short version is to count the people. That's it. Not to count their race, not to count their income, not to, to count the people and know what state they live in. That's it. But guaranteed, that's not what is being done. We've already had a legal debate about whether or not they could ask a person's citizenship in the census question. Now, that's a whole other issue that I've dealt with. But as we approach the census, remember, the purpose of the census is to count the people for representation in the House of Representatives and the allocation of direct taxes other than on, on something other than income. That's what we're going to be dealing with. So that should be a lot of fun. And I'm wondering how many people will look the government census taker in the eye and saying, none of your business. So I probably ought to tell you some of the things I have planned for the Constitution study this year. So late last year, I put together a system where I could offer classes for sale up on the web, and I'm putting those classes together. They'll start releasing over the next month or two or three um, on different topics about the Constitution. And you can purchase these classes a la carte. You can go in. I'm trying to keep them inexpensive so that they're not, uh, you know, I'm not doing master classes. Or you can go in and you can become a Constitution Study Insider. Now, an Insider is a monthly or annual subscription that allows you access to all of my classes as they come out. You also get access to certain special access, uh, special access webinars, uh, early access to certain content. That's for becoming an Insider, which is a great way to help support the work that I'm doing here at the Constitution Study and spreading this message of liberty. Now, if you live in the North Dakota area, I'm going to be in Bismarck in February. I'm doing a whole day class on the Constitution, a Constitution primer for middle school students. Now, if your days of middle school are behind you, don't worry. It's actually going to be for pretty much all ages, middle school and up. But if you have a student in that middle school, high school range, and you'd like them to get an understanding of the Constitution and some really basic civics that we can do and well, let's face it, it's only one day. It's absolutely free. Head over to the website, constitutionstudy.com. Uh, look for the North Dakota event. You can actually go to constitutionstudy.com-nd2020. That'll take you right to the page. It describes the, uh, the, the event, the schedule of the event, the logistics for the event. Register, show up, bring your kids. We'll have a great time. I'm looking at putting on more webinars. Uh, I've tried to get to events, and I still want to do that. If you want to have me speak to one of your groups, please, I'd love to do that. Uh, but if you can't get me out to where you are, let's do it over the web. Uh, I have a couple that I'm doing in the next couple of weeks that will help me solidify the process. But basically, if you have a group of people that have access to the Internet and a web browser, well, I can do a, a, a entire lesson to them on a topic of your choice. There are several on the website. Um, you can look up 
and uh, see what types of things I do. Just click under events and then speaking requests and you'll see several of the pre-canned topics and submit your request. And if we can make it happen, I'd love to make it happen. Now I'm doing a lot of this stuff. You know, I, I try not to charge. And when I do charge, I try to charge as little as possible because I want this to be in people's hands. But I'll tell you the truth, it's not easy. I spent a little over a year now full time working on the Constitution study. It is a labor of love, it is a passion, and I thoroughly enjoy it. I can't believe I get the opportunity to do this, but I still have to pay for things. And I'm hoping to find a core group of people that will help, whether they become Constitution Study insiders, uh, there are actually different levels of insider that you can join to help, or you're just willing to buy some of my material or donate to the cause. All of it's appreciated and all of it is used to help get this message out and moved forward so that more people know about our liberties and more people know about the need to read and study our Constitution, to know what our rights are, to prepare ourselves to defend them. Because if there's one thing I expect in 2020, is a lot more of what we had in 2019, and that is multiple attempts to infringe on your rights and my rights. So again, head over to the website. If you have a question, ask it. If you want some more information, ask. I'm always trying to be as responsive as possible. Enjoy the, what's been going on. If you can't afford to help and you just want to watch and, and, and I will make as much material available as possible. That's my goal. But if you can help, great. Most of all, if you can come back here next time and watch us at the Constitution Study, I'd look forward to it. I'll see you then. You have to know wherever you make your stay. Came from a long through line of everyday Americans.